Louis Patron back with the Key West Lou Legal Hour. When I left you, I was talking about fraud. I have three levels of fraud, three degrees of fraud, uh, three types of fraud to share with you today. The first one, I, which I shared at the end of the last segment, had to do with Subway's footlong sandwiches. They're not a foot long, as has been discovered. You've seen it in the news also, I'm sure. They're only 11 inches. You know, you say, well, what's an inch? Why is everyone making a big deal out of it? Let me tell you something. That one inch is worth millions of dollars every year to Subway that they don't have to give you 12 inches. They only provide 11 inches. So it's not fair if they advertise it and sell it to be a foot that they don't give you a foot. And they're, they're not standing up to it. They're, they're hardlining this thing. I don't understand what they're doing. Uh, they're saying, no, we didn't mean to fool, hurt anybody. This was a descriptive term. Bull, bull. It was a term to tell everyone we were buying a foot-long sandwich. They should stand up and say, we're wrong. We're going to correct it. Don't worry. Which now brings me to another type of fraud. And this, the first one's worth millions of dollars. This one's worth billions of dollars, believe it or not. I'm talking about prisoners in jail, murderers, rapists, robbers, people who assault, uh, tax evaders, uh, any kind of crime you can see, conceive of, people who go to jail, you know, to a state prison or a federal prison. Last year, last year, 2011, all right, 173,000 tax returns were filed which were fraudulent. 173,000 fraudulent tax returns. What do I mean by fraudulent first? The name of the person on the return and or the social security number were not correct. Okay? The people filing these tax returns were people in jail, prisoners. 173,000 prisoners in 2011 filed fraudulent tax returns. And prior to being caught, checks were being sent out to these people. They falsified their earnings, their names, uh, everything. But one way or another, they got the check. Now, what's interesting, that was for last year, 173,000. The year before, 2010, there were only 75,000. So it's a new gambit, a new game. And when the 75,000 started saying, gee, this is a way to make money, fellas, while we're in prison, they more than doubled the number of people doing it the next year. These refunds, okay, the government is on to this now, okay? The government is on to this, and no one, they claim, got a refund last year who was in jail that sh should not have gotten one, and they claim they caught 173,000 of these. The IRS says this, to the tune of $2.5 billion, $2.5 billion. I'm going to tell you something. I'm impressed by the audacity, by the genius that these people have in filing these returns. Uh, they got nothing else to do. They're sitting there. They might as well come up with new ways to make money. Uh, but they should try to do it a legal way. I don't know, but this shows ingenuity. Bad, though. Which now brings me to the worst. Banks. I want to talk about banks. We know that this recession that we're presently in, that started in 2008, which almost brought this nation down economically, was precipitated by, was caused by the banks. They screwed around with mortgage loans. They made it easy to borrow money. They didn't care if people could pay back. They didn't care what people's earnings were. They just wanted to write a new mortgage. They didn't care what the value of the property was because they took those mortgages. It was a piece of paper to them. And they sold it within 10 minutes after they gave you the money to somebody else who then packaged it and they had like, a, it was like a stock. They were trading bundles of mortgages, which were insured besides by AIG with funds provided by the government. This is all before the crash in 2008. Well, then the cry came up, there are some banks that are too big to fail. Remember, Lehman Brothers could never fail. One of the biggest in the world, if not the largest in the United States, Lehman Brothers. They went under. They went bankrupt. They ain't ever coming back. Too big to fail. So banks can go down, and a big bank can go down. The other banks that were saved because the government 
gave them money for a bailout, a bailout, which being the whores they are, these bankers, they used that money, they were supposed to use it to loan, make loans to customers to help them. Instead, they kept the money in-house, traded it between each other, made minor investments involving each other, and they used it for bonuses besides. They were paying themselves 10, 20, 30, 40 million dollar bonuses. Think about it, folks. You read about it. But none of this money was loaned out to the American public. What are you going to do? Because they drew the law wrong. There was nothing to compel them. Now it's happening in Europe. You've got the euro problem. It is happening right now in Italy. And this is what I wish to speak with you about. There is a bank in Italy called Montepaschi. Montepaschi Bank. Montepaschi is the oldest bank in Italy and one of the largest banks in Italy. They are in a scandal now. Seems like there were three high-level management people who made bad loans, large bad loans, which were also termed as investments, which they didn't keep accurate records about, as a result of which the bank has lost or $300 million on two of the deals, and the third one still being investigated. Two of the persons who were dishonest have been fired. The third one, I don't know what they're doing, but they still have him in their employ. It had to do with hedge funds. You've heard of that term before, because that's one of the things that got us in trouble in this country. It's being investigated. They lost $300 million. It's so bad, the situation, that they're stuck. The price of their stock, as of yesterday, was 31 cents a share. Not $31, not $231, 31 cents a share it dropped to. The bank may very well fold next week. It may be out of business next, next week. Uh, I had a friend of mine call me yesterday from Italy. She said, I have 100,000 euro in a, 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 in, in a note, a year-long note, uh, CD, CD, and what do I do with this bank, uh, Montepaschi? I says, get your money out of there. She says, geez, I got to stay another three months or I lose 600 euro in interest. I said, do you want to lose 600 euro in interest or do you want to lose 100,000 euro? Because once the bank goes under, no matter what protections the government claims they're going to provide, we've never had to do it here really, there ain't enough money or it will take years to get your money back. She wrote to me this morning, sent me an email that she moved all her money, she cashed in the CDs, and she moved it to a Dutch bank in Milan today. So, but it's happening there. Lehman Brothers is happening with the biggest, oldest, one of the biggest, and the oldest bank in Italy, Montepaschi. It's going down the tubes. They want the government to give them $600 million. They only owe $300 million, but they say there are other problems that are going to come up. So they need twice what their loss is right now, or they cannot survive. Now, the government of Italy that's broke, as we know, they're right behind Greece, is being asked to support this bank that was one of the leaders in Italy previously, whose stock is now selling for 31 cents a share. I'm going to go buy some of that stock, I think. Two, three thousand dollars worth? What can I lose? Two or three thousand dollars. If it goes up, it's worth a lot of money. All right, we're going to station break. Please stay with me. We'll have some more good things to talk about when I return.